So I'm uh, currently working on a musical. Uh, it's so far it's just a collection of songs. Uh, it's called Hungry Pond, and it's all about the life cycle of a pond. It's all the critters in the pond speaking first person about what their life is like, and it's all sort of tied together with the uh, with the uh, cycle of life and the the web of life. Everybody gets eaten before it's all over. <laughs> So I'd like to sing a lullaby for you, and this is a lullaby that would be sung by Mama Fish. I'd love to name you everyone, but I'd run out of names long before I'm done. And it would take much too much time, almost a million of you, each of you mine. I will forget your faces, you all look just the same. Should we meet again, I hope you don't hold me to blame. Don't mean to frighten or be rude. But in your mother's eyes, you look like food. So swim, swim little fishy, swim. Quick as you can grow. There's danger up over your head. Keep to the cool and dark and deepest part instead. When winter freezes off the sky, you'll only fall asleep. You will not die. The sun will warm the water. Insects will dip and land. You'll have to move up slowly. Catch as many as you can. But never linger in the sun. The heron jabs the raccoon and then you're done. So swim, swim little fishy, swim, quick as you can grow strong, or you won't be here long. You have your daddy's cool green eyes, keep the watchful open wise, your mother's song is almost done. Almost all I know, I've told you everything but one. Now most of you will not survive, because every living thing has to eat to keep alive. You'll learn to eat the others too, because it's nature's way what bigger little fishies do. You'll be swift and clever, pay attention, stay in school. Once slip, you're gone forever, Mother Nature's golden rule. When numbers dwindle, don't be sad. You are the strong survivors, just like your mom and dad. Swim, swim, little fishy, swim. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. And what now? You got one from the bottom of the food chain? Uh, well, the bottom of the food chain, oddly enough, starts on the surface, and so I do have a song all about the amoebas. It's called It's All Thanks to the Sun. <laughs> but I haven't memorized that one yet. I'm uh, very lucky to have some good friends who work in ecology, and uh, a particular a friend that works at the Hitchcock Center, which is in uh, Amherst, Massachusetts, and the Hitchcock Center is one of 11 buildings in the world that is completely self-contained, and they do projects with kids, bring them in and take them out to ponds, and they catch things, and then they study them, and uh, do all kinds of really amazing programs about that, and so I'm running all the songs past him <laughs> to make sure I'm factually correct, even if I'm creatively expressing the ideas. I sort of see it as uh, uh, Tim Burton's meets your fifth grade science teacher, is <laughs> where I'm going with it. Uh, I'm about a third of the way into it right now, still working with it. I'm also trying to develop 
just for your information because you didn't ask, uh, um, a school residency program where usually third grades study pond life, freshwater pond life. And so we would send lesson plans to each of the teachers of the third grade class and each of the lesson plans would be slightly different. So the kids would get a lesson about polywogs, how they change, uh, adaptation, plants, amoebas, whatever like that. And then they all get to go out to a pond and explore the pond and then bring it back into the classroom and do songwriting based on what they've learned. Uh, and so we're working on that, but we've got to find a 501c3 organization in Maine to help sponsor it, if any of you have any ideas, uh, and schools that might be willing to bring me in there. So it's uh, kind of a long-term project, but uh, I love songwriting with kids, and we all know how we learned the ABCs, so we need a lot more memorization songs. And so that's what, uh, that's what I'm trying to do with them, is to help them take that lesson and turn it into songs that will make it memorable for everybody. And speaking of which, this is something I've been doing for years and years until the economy crashed, was going into classrooms and teaching songwriting. We would write about whatever they were studying. For example, there was a school that was studying diversity, and the kindergarten class had been up to the nursing home, which was just a block up the street. Been to the nursing home, and it came back, and so I interviewed the kids. What was the experience like? And we always build off of a familiar melody so the kids understand how to build that song. They know what the melody is. They know how many words will fit into this line. So it gives them an opportunity to successfully create a song inside of one hour. The kindergartners wrote, people in a nursing home wobble when they walk. Some, some can't hear, some can't talk. But if you hold their hand and listen when they talk, we all feel good, powerful stuff from kindergartners. The second graders had studied Rosa Parks and they wrote, Rosa Parks, Rosa Parks, got on the bus, got on the bus, the bus was going around the town, she got arrested for sitting down just because her skin was brown and that's not fair, just not fair. They totally got the lesson. My favorite ever was the fourth grade class who was studying the digestive system. Digestive system is the thing that gives us our nutrition. We use it every time we eat. Here's its composition. First the teeth chew up and down. Tongue moves food around. Food gets softened with saliva. Needed to get it down. Muscles in your esophagus push the food down more. To the stomach where the juices really start to pour. Small intestine breaks the food down, turns it into energy. So blood vessels carry it all throughout me. Finally, the large intestine pushes through the body, squeezes with its muscles, and waste goes in the pot. <laughs> Fourth grade class. What was really sweet was they all ran out of the playground, grabbing their buddies, saying, Let me tell you about the digestive system. <laughs> So it's really a lot of very, uh, very rewarding work. And, uh, and uh, so, yeah, I was doing that till the economy crashed. And now, would you like refried beans or black beans with that? Part of the story of life. Got to do what you got to do. So I moved to Maine about 25 years ago, and I'd grown up in Georgia. Now, how many of you have lived here all your lives? A few of you, or at least in the north, a lot of your lives. Some of you may be surprised to find out that in the middle of winter in Georgia, it is still light at 7 o'clock in the evening. Then I moved to Maine. <laughs> and the days got shorter and shorter and shorter and darker and darker. And when is this going to end? I was pretty well freaking out. By about the third October coming around, uh, my partner said, Brian, I've noticed about, I mean, Martin, I've noticed about this time of year, you get a little testy with people. Maybe you should look into this. So I went and talked to the doctor, and we decided that, yes, indeed, I have seasonal affective disorder. Uh, so uh, I started taking Wellbutrin. That helps a little bit. Then I discovered vitamin D. Ooh, if you're not taking vitamin D, go get some tomorrow. Vitamin D is the difference between shoveling snow and cussing or shoveling snow and singing while you shovel the snow. Vitamin D, ooh, makes a lot of difference. But the other thing that makes a huge difference in any kind of depression is perspective. So I'd like to offer you a little bit of perspective. When depression's got you feeling like a loser, you're sucking mud, not getting anywhere. 
Surely hard times are a curse, but things could always be much worse. Consider the oyster for a moment if you dare. An oyster leads a dangerous and stressful life. Indeed, his chance to live at all is mighty slim. He can expect only one fate to end life on someone's plate. And until that, life specs are pretty grim. But why call him a he? Except for clarity, a normal oyster never knows from year to year whether he is he or she reversing sexuality till neither masculine nor feminine is clear. She, her energies are truly feminine. Single summer season when she's in her prime, she'll spawn a million eggs with ease and larvae squiggling through the seas, and then become a he again as if she'd only changed her mind. In 14 days, the larva speeds through adolescence if he avoids the hungry fishy swimming by. And as she floats, she grows one foot and some cement to keep him put. And if she thought at all, she'd surely wonder why. By surprise, he bumps into a clean, hard object. Our lucky spat attaches firmly to this home. He hopes to hide from prying eyes until she grows into some size. But she's stuck forever, never more to roll. And one would hope the branch staying put would bring her safety. Extermination lurks at every tide. She lies immobile as a rock while enemies are taking stock. There is no running off, and there is nowhere else to hide. A hungry starfish wraps its arms around an oyster like a hideous lover forcing shells apart. Thrusts its stomach in between creating quite an ugly scene, digesting oyster sushi tartare a la carte. And there's a host of other dangers all around her. There's the boring sponge and then the oyster drill. There's the leech and the black drum to which an oyster could succumb. And even hungry ducks are known to eat their fill. If she escapes the duck leech for her sponge and starfish, she must surrender as she's harvested and bought. And then some human cracks her up using her half shell as a cup and slips her slimy living body down his throat without a thought. So, when you think you're at your lowest, life is over. Recall the oyster has one foot and you have two. You can kick yourself in the butt, get up and get out of that rut, and make the most of life that God has given you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks very much. True story. <laughs> that uh, I wish I was as smart as that, actually. That song is based on an essay written by a food writer from the 1930s to the 60s. Her name was M.F.K. Fisher, and I'm, I bet you've got some M.F.K. Fisher in your food section here in the library somewhere. Surely you must. M.F.K. Fisher, look her up. All of her books are about food, and they give marvelous recipes and incredible information, but it's all anecdotal. So she's telling incredible, amazing stories, and the information is contained in the stories. Well worth checking her out. Her first book that I read was called How to Cook a Wolf. And it was all about how to survive the Great Depression. She has one chapter called How to Keep Your Family Alive for, for a Month for $5. And she promises at the end they will look pretty pasty, but they'll still be alive. <laughs> she gives great, great cooking tips. Uh, but a lot of fun. Very humorous writer, MFK Fisher. Let's see, let's do something uh, a little simpler for you. When I was about 22 years old, I wrote my first love song. And I didn't know squat about love, I gotta tell you. I think that ignorance comes across very nicely in this song. I want to sing you a morning song I want to sing the birds rising I want to sing to you Of how good I feel When I wake up 
by your side I want to wake up by your side Well, it was just that way this morning As if I'd heard some old rooster crow My poor old heart was swaying to and fro As the sky began to glow I was aware of your body breathing as it lay warm and next to mine I had closed my eyes and drifted back asleep Knowing this day would go fine I want to sing you a morning song I want to sing when birds arise And I want to sing to you of how good I feel when I wake up by your side I want to wake up by your side Last night I dreamt I was on a ship Headed for some foreign shore I had to jump and swim for freedom Or not see you anymore then I landed on an island, the only land there to see. I closed my eyes and I thanked the Lord, and when I woke, you were next to me. I want to sing you a morning song. I want to sing the birds rising. I want to sing to you. Of how good I feel when I wake up by your side I want to sing you a morning song I want to sing the birds arising I want to sing to you Of how good I feel when I wake up by your side I want to wake up by your side very much. Well, you have been a lovely audience. I really appreciate you coming out. Thank God it didn't snow. Uh, and I just want to appreciate that you're coming out to support this program here at the library. I kept driving and driving going, wow, this place is really out there, middle of nowhere. And it's a lovely library. You've, got a, you've done a beautiful job, Sharon, taking care of this place. And it's some, absolutely. And it's very important for you to keep showing up. So thank you for doing that. This is how we build community. And by adding this kind of thing, this is how we make the community really big. So I think these days that's one of the most important things we can do is just build community in any way that we can. And uh, music is a great way to build community. So I'm gonna do one last song for you and uh, as I told you before, uh, again, my name is Martin Swinger. If you want to know more about me, you can just Google Swinger. You'll end up in some very unusual places. <laughs> but if you put my name Martin in front of it, you'll find me. I'm there. It really is my name. It's an old German name. Schringer is what it was. It means the same thing in German. I have no idea what my ancestors did. <laughs> but they must have had fun. There's lots of us. So, uh, so thank you for coming. Visit my website, martinswinger.com. Uh, I've got... Uh, CDs over here with uh, most of the songs you've heard this evening. Uh, business cards, there's uh, bumper stickers there. I'm a swinger fan. They're free. Help yourself. Get yourself in trouble. <laughs> uh, I've got a mailing list. If you want to know how to avoid me, put your name there. I'll warn you that I'm coming. So uh, again, uh, thank you. And uh, this is, uh, once again, a true story. Providence has brought two souls together For karma it was certainly a clue He fell in love the moment that he met her So Buddha started dating Betty Boop Betty Boop and Buddha Driving in a car Stopping at the farmer's market 
Buddha riding shotgun, Betty at the wheel, singing boop, boop, and look for a place to park it. Betty Boop and Buddha are weaving down the aisle. Betty Boop is shopping, Buddha humming. Betty buys a bagel, Buddha eyes a beer. Buddha, Betty tells him, you can put that pack right here, boop, boop, dear. But before you do, Got a jug of wine, bread and cheese for two. Buddha smiled at Betty, Betty smiled at Buddha too. Buddha, he's just humming, cause he hopes Nirvana's coming. Shoot it up, bring it up, boy, what we got today. is just a swing. Betty on a squeeze box, pumping out a tune, singing bop, bop, a loop, bop, but don't mean maybe. Oh, boo, don't you be my baby. Ooh, and Betty sways her knee, fingers flying, feet and toes are flapping. Betty plays a polka like a beehive full of bees, and Buddha's fingers snapping. He's sure Nirvana's bound to happen. Existential band keeps right on playing. Betty Buddha whispers, My dear, you dance divine. And Betty starts to bubble. A Buddha dips her double time. But you can do. And Betty rolls her eyes. Buddha, I believe I'm feeling butterfly. Buddha's heart is thumping. Oh, Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. Oh, Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. Betty's heart is bumping. Betty Buddha, Buddha. Betty Buddha, Buddha. What you say now? Nirvana's on its way now. Betty boop boota, boota boop Betty, Betty boop boota, Betty boop 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 boop. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, folks. Happy to talk with you. If you want to talk about anything, happy to. Thanks for coming out. <laughs>